So it's no secret that the Akai MPD 218 is one of the best budget options on the market when it comes to pad-based controllers. Akai is legendary when it comes to their, their pads, their controllers, their MIDI devices, and that definitely continues on into the Akai MPD 218. Now, if you're watching on my channel, which obviously you are because you're watching this video, um, you're used to me talking about iPad music production and this is where I think the Akai shines in comparison to other budget controllers. Now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, this right here is the Akai MPD 218. It is $119 on Amazon, and uh, if you guys wanna cop that, definitely check out the link in the description. It's the first link in the description. Yeah, it's an affiliate link, but uh, it definitely helps out the channel. Costs you nothing extra to use it if you decide to pick one of these up. If you pick one up, you will not uh, you, you will not regret it, and I'm going to tell you why. But first off, let's talk a little bit about the, hard, the hardware. Let's get some top-down action here. So, the Akai MPD-218 is a 16-pad MIDI controller. Really nice pads. You can kind of see, I'll try to put it to where you can see it. But the thickness of the pads is pretty thick. Thicker than I was expecting when I got it. And they have really nice, uh, I mean, the pads feel really nice. You can tell that they have good responsiveness when you play them in uh in, in your, you know, obviously in your music software. It's bus powered, which means that it uh, does not need a separate power cable. You just plug it in with the USB-B uh, to USB-A cable that comes with it. Um, and it's powered through your iPad when you connect your iPad. And it also is a class compliant device. What that means is you don't need any special drivers in order to use this. So it has 16 pads, but you've got six encoders on the side here, six knobs. Now these are endless encoders. I've talked about the endless encoders on Akai products before, but basically you turn this and you turn it and it will continue to turn. Um, this is really awesome because you don't have to worry about where your knob last was when you use it to control the different software knobs in a program like Beatmaker 3 or any other DAW that you're using. You don't have to like make sure you set it back to zero before you use it. It'll pick up exactly where it is, you know, regardless when you, when you use it. And we'll talk about some of the limitations with something like this when it comes to Beatmaker 3. There are a couple. But you've got six buttons down here. We're going to talk exactly about uh, what those do, but that's the hardware side of it. it. There's nothing too much to it. What I like about it is actually pretty darn thin, con you know, considering what it is, a pad-based controller. This is really portable, and one thing I did, um, here, let me see if I can actually show you this. Um, I'm all about having a good mobile setup. Now, this isn't the most mobile MIDI controller you can get. Something like the Sensor Morph would be more for that, but um, it actually pairs really well with the iPad. So I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about what my uh, mobile setup would look like. So what you can do is throw the iPad right here on the Magic Keyboard case if you have one. Normally I would plug this in straight into the iPad using like a USB-A to USB-C adapter. Um, but I'm going to plug this into my hub because my iPad is already plugged in. And then we'll plug in the Akai MPD. Boom, it's lit up. And this is what I like about it. You can kind of just slide it right right there, right in the keyboard. The cable kind of tucks behind. You can tuck as much of this cable as you want back there. But if you're headed to like a coffee shop or something, obviously, you know, doing it safely in these COVID times, you can just slap this on top of your keyboard and it's actually perfect. You can go, you know, oh, sorry, that's probably pretty loud. <laughs> you can uh, slap this on top of your keyboard and just get to work. That's what I like about it. So it's pretty solid if you want to be portable. So um, let's get into a little bit about the features and how well it pairs with Beatmaker 3. So we've got it connected here. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this back up the way it was. Definitely hit that like button if you haven't. That definitely helps out the channel, puts this video in front of more people, and it also helps to fine tune your suggested feed with more videos like this that you might enjoy. So smash the like button. That's the first time I've said smash that like button and it didn't feel natural. Let's get back to it. So we got the Akai MPD hooked up. Let's go ahead and get the screen where you can see it. And there's a few things we have to do in order to make this have a solid experience with Beatmaker 3. So we're gonna show you how to do that. It's pretty easy though, pretty simple. Go ahead and go into your settings and we're gonna go over to MIDI focus action. So this is where you would go to set up any MIDI controller that you're gonna set up right here in MIDI focus actions. And I'll show you guys on this screen, this is what it looks like. So you've got basically all the different parameters um, 
within BeatMaker 3 that you can individually map. Now, there's a couple ways to do this quickly and efficiently. Um, I have a preset already saved, so if I want to switch back and forth between this and another MIDI controller, all I have to do is hit Load Template, and then I have the different templates that I use. What we're going to do is go ahead and clear everything, and we will create a new binding for this MIDI controller. So this is how you do it. So you can set up all 16 pads. This is a 16 pad controller, so we don't need the 64 pad mode. And we're going to hit uh, Auto Learn, and that's going to start with the first one. And we're going to find two. We're going to go ahead and hit these pads in order. So starting with pad one, one. See, it's loaded up there. Hit pad two, three. Four. And a quick tip, don't hit these too fast or you might skip one and you might get it not you know, bound very well. So definitely take your time and then we can hit stop learn there. Now that's not the only things you can set up. Obviously you can set up your macro controls. So I've got macros one through 16. Obviously you only have six knobs here, but this is where some of the cool functionality comes uh, in handy with the Akai MPD. So the way this works is this isn't just 16 pads. This is a set of 16 pads and you can have as many sets as you want. So for example, we are currently on pad bank A. I don't know if you guys can see that here. This light is on A here. And if I hit this pad bank button, it's gonna to switch to pad B. This is now a whole new set of 16 pads. And all I had to do was push a button to change it. So now, for example, if I wanted to make this like a 64 pad uh, device, I can hit this 16 pad button, uh, 16 pads device button up here, and that enables all 64 pads. So now that I have, you know, my pad bank set to B, I can go ahead and add all of these pads in now too, just like this. So you start with, we'll turn on auto learn, pad 17, boom, 18, 19, 20, 21, and so on and so forth. You get the picture. But we can go all the way through and you can do that for up to three different pad banks. So we'll hit stop learn. There's another one. You hit pad bank again. You've got another set of 16 pads. That's 16 plus 16, 32. Was that 48 pads? You got 48 pads on this device, which is super dope. And all you got to do is switch between them that way. Now, there's also a program select button. This is going to basically multiply all of these pads times way more. Uh, but this is what's going to get you the best bang for your buck out of this. When you hit program select, it allows you to switch to a whole different setup for your whole MIDI controller. So that goes for the knobs too. So if I hit pad two right here, we have completely wiped the device. I mean, we didn't wipe it, but it's a whole new fresh setup. And you can change that um, and, and set these pads to whatever you want. One thing I did with this is I decided, okay, on program two, I wanna have some of my transport controls set up. So we'll, we'll just scroll down here to transport and say I want play to be this one up here. There it is. And then we'll do stop, record, and we'll do loop. So I can just hit play, stop, just like that. Get my headphones so I know what you guys are hearing. Cool, so now you know how that works. So far we've covered pad bank and program select. Pad bank allows you to just swap these pads here and uh, program select will allow you to set up to 16 different whole configurations for the whole controller, including your knobs, which is super dope. Um, now there is a, a whole set of three for your knobs over here too. Um, just like the pad bank, we went through these three different settings. There's the same thing for this control bank over here. So we're on control bank A, and that has a fresh set of six knobs. And we can map these to our macros in the macros tab. For those of you that aren't familiar with the macros tab in BeatMaker 3, you can map anything to a set of macros here. And it's really easy to do. So just like we were in our MIDI focus actions, if you go to down here, you can see macro control one through 16. Once you've mapped these six, just press control bank B, and then you can map the next six. So that would be seven through 12, right? Super, super clutch. Now, this is a fully, you know, touch sensitive pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up the template that I already have. And I will show you guys, you know, how it sounds. So fully um, sensitive, you know, to your touch. Now you can turn off that sensitive sensitivity by pressing the full level button and you can, everything will come in at the same level, which 
kind of defeats the purpose of having a controller like this. But before I go any further, why do you need a controller like this? Why do you need a MIDI controller at all when it comes to iPad beat making? You know, we have the pads on the screen for something like Beatmaker, right? Why do we need a pad controller with digital pads as well. Well, if you haven't figured it out, this is not touch sensitive. I mean, it's touch sensitive as in it can pick up your touches, but it doesn't have that multi-layer uh, feedback that MIDI controllers can sense. So basically it can't sense pressure. So it can't have, you know, expression to it. So as I'm hitting this, you know, it's getting louder. And you can see that right here in the velocity section. You can't do that with these pads. Now you could do that in something like this over here. But if you want to finger drum, as in like play more than one instrument at a time, you can't really mess with this. It doesn't work well. So having a pad-based controller like this is super clutch. It's going to make it really, really good for doing like your hi-hats and stuff or something like this. Just for that, it's pretty worth it. There is a way of velocity sensitivity with these pads in the settings. So, so you can switch these on or off. And basically, like I was saying, so you can go from like lower to higher like this. I don't know if you guys can see this velocity trigger as I go up and down, that changes. But yeah, that is something you can do if you're just, you know, on the go with just your iPad. That's definitely something you can do. But that does still get complicated if you're doing something like finger drumming where you're trying to, like my kick, I don't I don't want to accidentally hit over here on the, on the side <laughs> with my kick and have it be quiet, you know, trying to get my fingers in the right place. That's what something like a pad controller is killer for. So I can just... Yeah, something like that, that's what you need a pad controller for. But there's some still some killer functionality we haven't talked about. So this has built-in hardware note repeat. Um, so just like the roll tab here in Beatmaker 3 where you can do stuff like this. You know, going across the different lanes. Um, you can set an actual note repeat here for this uh, controller. And one thing that's really cool about doing your note repeat independent of this right here is these velocity sensitive pads allow you to change how loud or soft it is. So for example, in our config, that's note repeat configuration. Um, and if I hit this button, we have some options. So this pad is lit up, this pad is lit up, and this pad is lit up. I don't know if you can see that. So this is going off of these white labels here. So this says 1 16th. This is setting the note repeat to, one, to 16th notes. So that's pretty good, we'll keep that. You can set whether it's swung or not. This says, you probably can't see that very well. Let's see if I can lift it up where you can see it. Let's do this. There we go. That's probably helpful. So swing off, um, you can set that to, you know, whatever you want the swing to be, 54%, 56. I do find that it doesn't have enough variation for the swing. I wish it went down to something like 33 or 20, you know, uh, but you can do that. And then you can do, uh, you can set whether it's set to an external clock source, or if you want to tap in your own tempo, you can do that. Now by default, it's set to tap tempo and that allows you to, um, let's see, turn off external clock and then you can tap your tempo. So, so now if I hit the, uh, note repeat button right here and I press this pad, we got 16th notes. Now, as I let off the pad, you can see it's getting softer, which is super dope. It's sensing, you know, how hard I'm pressing it and it's adjusting you know, the velocity, which is super dope. I don't even have to lift my finger off the pad in order to do that, and that's super helpful. If you wanna set it to match the tempo of Beatmaker, you can do that really easily. So in your MIDI settings, you'll go over here and you'll go to your MIDI sync. So we have MIDI clock out turned on. You need to have that turned on. What that does is it sends out MIDI information from your iPad to any MIDI devices that you have connected to it. Um, you can control whether it's, it syncs or not through this sync button here. Uh, I have the sync turned on for the MIDI out and the MIDI in for the MPD. And now that I have MIDI clock out turned on, um, this will sync up with the project. So let's get the metronome going. You can hear that. And if I hit no repeat, um, let's see, go to external clock turned on. And we'll do some note repeat. So 
So it's, it's synced up and you can go back and press it again and it's set. Now I have found that it seems to be slightly off and that to me I think is an issue with the latency settings. So, you know, if it's set to something like 128, that might help. If you're doing it on a project that has a lot of instruments, you might run into some crackling and issues and stuff like that if you have your latency turned down too low. So, that right there is the primary functions of the MPD-218. It is a killer device for the price. It goes for a hundred and was it 118, dollars on Amazon. It's about 130 something after tax. Uh, it is the best bang for your buck that I've seen for a pad controller. Now I've seen uh, something else that's a 16 pad controller like the Atom. Uh, I don't know what brand that is, but it's called the Atom, A-T-O-M. And that's another 16 pad controller I might check out in the future if you guys have any interest in that. But right now, this right here has been a killer device and I'm excited to try some more controllers on this channel. Let me know what you guys think of the Akai MPD-218 in the comments section if you have one. If you don't have one, let me know. Are you thinking about picking one up in the future? It's a pretty dope controller. Quick question of the day. We talked about the Akai MPD and how dope it is for Beatmaker 3. I want to know what is your MIDI controller of choice? Um, if you have one, let me know down in the comment section. I'm always looking to check out new gear. Um, but also those of you that are new to the idea of MIDI controllers, did what you see in this video actually convince you that you might need one? I, I'd like to know. It, it definitely changes the game a little bit for Beatmaker 3, for iPad music production in general. Um, I, I do iPad music production because I love a tactile experience. A pad-based MIDI controller definitely amps that up and take it to the next level. All right, so that has been it. Creatives, go make something dope, and I'll see you in the next video.